and also Paul Koretz. That, that's a quorum. Uh, I'm sure uh, Mr. Labonge and, and, and uh, uh, Mr. Alarcon, um, they're both scheduled to come, too, as time goes on. But I didn't want you to wait any longer, folks, for, for what this is all about. I know there are folks here. How many are here for the Wilshire bus only lane? Raise your hand. Uh, how many are here for, um, well, it doesn't look like there's Clyde Williams for his shtick. And then we have uh, three cards for item number two. What's item number two? Item number two is the city engineer report and EIR uh, related to the North Spring Street Viaduct widening and rehabilitation project. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the big one is special item number one. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is Jaime here? Uh, congratulations, folks. Stand up. He's going to be the acting head of the DOT. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> He's more than observing today, but uh, uh, we, we welcome him uh, to, to this uh, position and, and to his leadership uh, going forward. Um, I guess we should uh, start with the, the, the little ones and get, get one quickly done. First, we'll just do public comment. Go ahead, Dr. Clyde Williams. General comment. Dr. Williams? Dr. Dr. Williams. Williams, quickly. Public comment. Yeah, yeah. You can leave your hat on. We, we respect you. You can take it off and tip it. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno. Two things. Number one, uh, can the city of Los Angeles support Mr. Cedillo's bill, AB 353? That is, re a revocation of a provision within the transportation uh, code of the state of California, which would give back to local governments the right to stop Caltrans from going through their areas. Uh, this would be consistent with the resolution by the City Council of Los Angeles to stop Caltrans 7 SR 710 North Extension through Zones 1, Zones 2, of Los Angeles and basically Zone 3 in Los Angeles. This was passed unanimously, of course, and it's never been implemented to revoke or rescind Sam Yorty's agreement with Caltrans for the 710 as a surface route through East LA. So we'd like to have the City Council support AB 353 for uh, its passage into the Senate. So, uh, second one, uh, we're doing fire hydrants. That is, we're repainting all of the fire hydrants in El Sereno. However, we've noticed that a lot of the fire hydrants have no red curb markings. And we've been told by Public Works that it's not theirs. BWP says it's not theirs, but it belongs to LA DOT. We'd like to have some provisions as to can we paint curbs around fire hydrants. We had we did one as a demonstration, and it worked successfully. Before people were parking their cars next to the fire hydrant, after we painted one curb five feet on either side, they stopped parking in front of the fire hydrant. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. You did it right on the two-minute number. Thank you. Um, let's just um, uh, approve the motion and open file. Okay, item number one. Item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the extension of the appointment of Mr. Amir Sadati as the interim general manager of DOT. This was superseded by Mr. De La Vega's appointment, so I would recommend we receive and file that. Any problem with that, colleague, to note and file that? So moved. I um, appreciate that. Uh, item number two. Item number two is a city engineer report, environmental impact report, and related findings rel um, relative to the North Spring Street Viaduct widening and rehabilitation project. Okay, we have three cards on that. Could I ask the three to come on up? Uh, Jill uh, Sorrell, I'm mispronouncing it. Jill Oh, very good. Uh, Adrian Scott Fine. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Williams, you're back up again. Can we have a presentation first? Pardon me? Is there a presentation? Ooh, yeah, it might not be first. Uh, why don't we have comment first? And, and, and if they say something, 
in the presentation that requires further discussion, we'll be happy to do that, too. Please. Good afternoon, Council Members. Jill Soriel from Council Member Reyes's office. You have a letter on behalf of the Councilman that should be in front of you. I just wanted to reiterate his support for this project moving forward. We have made several changes since the last time it was before your committee. And I wanted to thank the Cultural Heritage Commissioners who are here today, Bureau of Engineering, Planning Staff. I think they've worked together to come up with a very viable option. I'm mainly here to answer questions, but we're supporting the one-side widening option with a dual modern arch alternative. The overall project is sizing retrofit, bicycle lanes, sidewalks, traffic signals, and lane enhancements. And so the project serves an overall need in the community. So your office is happy and the Councilman is happy? Yes. Terrific. Sir. Sir. Good afternoon, Councilpersons. Adrian Fine, Director of Advocacy for the Los Angeles Conservancy. I'm also here in support. We've worked for some time now with the main concern that any project with the North Spring Street Bridge at the end of the day, it would retain the historic eligibility of the structure. So we're pleased that the Bureau of Engineering has come a long way in revisiting that and looking at options that would do that. We are in support of the two, either of the two designs that are modern differentiated designs that would come closest to meeting the Secretary of Interior standards and also retain eligibility. Having said that, we are opposed to the potential project or design that would replicate as far as the south side widening. So again, we're only in support of the two differentiated modern designs. Thank you. And that's what's before us today, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, also with the Northeast LA Coalition. One minute? Oh, okay. Piecemealing. This is only one part of a much larger process. That is, Lincoln Heights Broadway and San Fernando Road. This has to be done in order to increase and improve the traffic flow across the river. It's a piecemeal. It's one piece of a much larger scheme, and we've had enough problems in Lincoln Heights on Broadway having flow being, commuter flow being more important than pedestrian rights. We had to defend two crosswalks because they're not signalized. However, there's also a matter that within the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, they have two provisions. One, to make a reasonable effort, and then to make another reasonable effort. These are defined by the LA DOT and or the Bureau of Engineering. So we're quite concerned regarding what reasonable means and who's going to enforce it and how they've been working with the neighborhood councils in the area and the other community organizations. There is a problem. The Cornfields Royal Seco specific plan a year ago had a provision in it that it wanted to retain the existing bridge and reduce the number of lanes to one each way rather than the current two or the proposed two ways. This would reduce the traffic flow through the Cornfields Royal Seco. So there is a linkage that CRA, when they took charge of the Cornfields Royal Seco, changed it to promote more traffic. We need to promote more buses and more transit through this area rather than cars. Thank you. All right, thank you. Staff, could you quickly come up and give us a summary of this? We saw two in favor, and we heard one about the piecemeal concept. Just give us a quick summary of where we are in this for myself and for my colleagues. Good afternoon. Make it quick. I got 30 cards for that special. And Mr. Labonte, we'll always figure out one minute, right, maybe? One minute, that'd be great. If we can do that. You bet you. I'll make the motion. Well, we'll wait a second. This is for what? Oh, for this item? Ms. Bernstein, would you come up quickly since you came in? We've had three other folks speak. You can be the last one on it, and the staff will quickly explain what we're doing. How are you on this one? Good. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee members. Ken Bernstein with the City Planning Department, Office of Historic Resources. 
We have been um, partnering with uh, Bureau of Engineering and their project team over the last year since this project was, um, was last before the committee. And we first wanted to thank the staff of BOE for all the hard work um, in developing the additional alternatives to the proposed widening. We had a subcommittee of the Cultural Heritage Commission working on this item um, and uh, had many meetings to refine the project alternatives. I wanted to um, introduce two of our commissioners who are here today and have a strong interest in this, uh, Commissioner Roella Louie and uh, Commissioner Gail Kennard, and uh, they are here uh, for any uh, uh, questions and discussion as well. The commission considered the revised project alternatives at its May 5th uh, meeting and unanimously supported the one side widening alternative as opposed to the original preferred alternative that called for the 40 foot widening on both sides of the historic bridge which would have been very detrimental to the continued eligibility of this bridge as a historic cultural monument. The commission did uh, express a preference however for a slightly different uh, alternative than what is in the staff recommendation. Three, three of the commissioners expressed support for the um, si differentiated single arch design finding it a more elegant complement to the existing historic bridge. In historic preservation, we try to walk this fine line between um, compatibility of a, of a new addition to a building or a structure, making sure that it's compatible to the historic structure, while also making sure that it is of its time and place, uh, and that a 21st century addition reads um, as uh, an element of the 21st century, rather than being indistinguishably added to a historic structure. And the commission, three of our commissioners felt that the um, single arch design provided a, um, three of the commissioners felt that the single arch design provided um, a better mix of differentiation and compatibility. One of our commissioners, Commissioner uh, Jones Hamaker, did express support for the differentiated double arch uh, option that is being recommended by BOE staff. Regardless, uh, we've come a long way in the, last, um, in the last year. Both of the alternatives, both of these design alternatives are far preferable uh, to what was originally proposed in the EIR, is still in the EIR, uh, but is not the preferred option at this point. We urge your support of the, uh, the new design option, but once again, we did want to make clear that the Cultural Heritage Commission at its meeting last month did express a preference for the single arch design option as being more clearly in conformance with the Secretary of the Interior standards. In that concept, have you spoken with Mr. Reyes's people about that? And Mr. Yeah, Reyes? We've, we've discussed it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Labonge, can we let them Just, hear? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Fine with me. Just questions on a couple of things. I know, uh, is this on the east side or west side that you're trying to do it, or the north side or the south side? Northeast of downtown Los Angeles. No, I know where it is, but I mean, on, on the bridge, on the Spring Street Bridge. And if you go over the bridge right now, to the right would be the east side, to the left would be the west side. What would you widen? We're widening the south side, the downstream side. To the keep downstream the, or the east side, bridge. if you would look at that. Right. Okay. To keep and the, does that fit into the new park that is uh, the Dairy Park, if that's what's the right name, so it matches that? We're within the right-of-way. Um, we do have the, the Swiss Dairy Farm, if that's what you're referring to. Right. Um, we have a, under, a pedestrian underpass connecting the Downey Recreation Center to the Downey Pool, and the Downey Recreation Center is just north of the Will, the, will that pedestrian center be... Uh, you could get get to Downey from underneath the uh, from underneath the bridge, um, just adjacent to the east abutment. And have you met with the railroads about this? We are. Uh, we currently have a draft construction and maintenance agreement. Uh, we still have to go through the full railroad agreement with them as we approach the design phase. And uh, the high speed rail is is or is not near there, if it comes. It is not near there. Where is it? I don't know where it is. But have you talked to them? We're in the process of All right. I, I just think you're doing a great job, but you got to talk to the railroads. Right. Next to the people who were here before us, then what came the railroads. And the railroads are very tough in the sense of things. So I just think uh, this compromise, if it's come up, Mr. Reyes supports it. And the best addition of many additions to the first district has been that open space acquired through the dairy that connects the river to the people with the exception of the railroad line. So I would just say if you have that, but you absolutely must meet with the railroads because they have a, uh, an impact that may or may not change your design on that. And I do believe it's important uh, to uh, highlight these great bridges. 
Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Mr. Rosendahl. Reyes. Rosendahl. Do you mind giving us a quick Reader's Digest version of this so people can understand it? We now have Mr. Alicon in the room, so we have all five. Good afternoon, Honorable Members. My name is Grace David. I'm with the Bureau of Engineering. Last year, this Transportation Committee redirected our project team to explore design options due to the concerns on the extent of historic impacts. The Bureau of Engineering formed a working group to reevaluate community feedback in collaboration with a variety of interested parties, including historic preservationists, the Mayor's Design Advisory Panel, traffic operations engineers, bikeway specialists, and CD1. The team developed the reduced single-side widening, which we are presenting in the revised final EIR as the design option, and we are recommending that to City Council for approval. We are also recommending the selection of the dual differentiated arch with CD1's guidance. This is a compromise between the replication, which is preferred by the community, and the single arch, which is preferred, as Ken had mentioned, by the Cultural Heritage Commission. When the project was redirected last June, the project lost $5 million in state funding. I'm sorry? How much? $5 million. And later that summer, the CTC allowed us to reapply for that funding. They gave us nine months to complete the environmental document, which brings us to this June 30th, and that's why we are strongly recommending that City Council move forward with certifying this document, and we intend to reach City Council next week with your approval. Great. Anybody else want to add to it? Okay. I just want to absolutely say you've got to meet with the railroads before you get down the line because of the impacts. I don't want to see a design something they've got to change. Colleagues? Anybody? Mr. Parks? Let me just ask one point of clarity. In the report, it reflects that Option A, which you're proposing, does not fully comply with federal standards. What does that mean, and what aren't we complying with? I'd like to introduce Andrea Galvin. She's the historic preservationist on our consultant team. She'd be able to address your concerns. Thank you. As Ken had indicated, from a professional standpoint, when we're looking at preserving historic properties, we're really interested in preserving the historic character, design, and materials of the existing property, and then any additions we want to reflect its own time and space so it doesn't create a false sense of history. So Design Option A, which would be the full replication, would do that. It would run the risk 100 years from now of somebody looking back and maybe incorrectly thinking that it was built at the same time as the original bridge. Does that answer your question? Oh, the federal guidelines that we utilize is the Secretary of the Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties, and that's a nationwide. It's administered through the National Park Service, and there's ten sets of standards that we look at in terms of looking at impacts on historic properties. So under CEQA, if a project meets those standards, then it would be considered to mitigate to a level of less than significant. Under Section 106 in NEPA, they also look to those standards as one of the five criteria of adverse effect. If a project meets the standards, then in effect it would not have an adverse effect. It would not have a significant impact on the environment. I'm just trying to find out. I understand the process that you mentioned, but is there something specific when we said it did not fully comply? On Option A, which is the full replication, the replication. It would not fully comply. Yes. What is it specifically that didn't comply? Specifically under Standard No. 6, it states that any – or I'm sorry, Standard No. 9 states that any related new construction would be compatible but distinguishable from the original. And that also No. 10 would be that if it were to be removed in the future, that the essential form and features of the original feature would be unimpaired. So under that approach, the design Option A is not distinguishable enough from the original, and it also would be physically connected to the original at the base and would cause more physical damage to the existing viaduct than the other two options. I'd also like to clarify, when Andrea refers to Option A, we have the design option to do the reduced single-side widening. Within that design option, we can either have 
a similar Beaux-Arts design or a differentiated design. She's referring to if we were to do the replication. We also have two design concepts in the revised final EIR, which shows the, the single arch and the, the dual arch with a differentiated look. Mm -hmm. So she's referring, I believe, to the, the replication, not fully. So we're not dealing with anything structurally. We're just talking about the design features. Correct. As far as fully. Well, the design and how the new bridge is connected to the old bridge. Okay. And um, with uh, the design option A, it would be connected at the pier level, which is one of the most significant features of the bridge, as well as at the, the superstructure, the deck level. Whereas the other two differentiated approaches, the base of that um, addition would be pulled away from the original base of the bridge so that you could essentially see the original in its entirety. The only physical connection would be at the deck and superstructure level to, you know, to support cars. And let me just, my final question. The primary reason for dropping from 40 feet to 20 feet is to retain the historical structure. It's not right. a issue that deals with a um, stronger bridge or the structure. The bridge has to do with maintaining the historical structure. Right. It's not structural, but we still maintain the purpose and need of the project. Thank you. Just a quick question. Uh, City Attorney, uh, we do this and we downsize this. Five years from now, there's an accident. They go back and look at the records and say the city did have a plan to widen this 40 feet, but they didn't. Uh, what's our liability on that? Or we believed it all? Meaning there was a plan to widen this bridge wider. And I know there's other bridges in the city. And I think of the bridge of the Hyperion where there was a plan to widen it. But then the Bureau of Engineering, just for whatever reason, without informing the council office, said they don't want to widen it. In the meantime, someone was tragically injured on that bridge. I just want to know for the intent here for protection, and maybe this is later for council, if we downsize the project, is there any liability that we would have if we were contested if someone riding a bicycle or in a vehicle or in a truck? Because we did announce that this was going to be widened, correct? Right? So now we're downsizing it. What protection does the historic? I'm looking at the historic <laughs> representative because I think it's just important for the record. Councilman, I'll let the city attorney answer on the legal issue. I would just say um, on behalf of our partners at BOE, this is still a substantial widening of the bridge. It is still a project that will meet the purpose and need that was articulated in the original EIR. It is still widening. It so I just want to get that on the record. Keep going, For Ken. bicycle and pedestrian Got access. Got it. For as, safety. As all right. and, and addressing all. And the I'll stop issues. right now, but before I stop, I want to say, Miss uh, Louis and Miss Kennard are from two great families of Los Angeles <laughs> and are two great commissioners. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. You okay, well done. I got that for the record. Colleagues, yes. any other uh, comments okay. from my colleagues? No, I move on this forward. motion. Move it. Uh, Mr. Labange moves forward to approve the BOE recommendations. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Sure. Okay, great. Unanimous. It would be nice if life went that easy. Okay, let's real quickly do number three, which is no cards on it. Uh, and what um, the suggestion is, action is to approve this motion. Please read uh, item number three. Item number three is the Smith-Rosendahl motion authorizing DOT to negotiate and execute a cooperative agreement with Caltrans to allow the payment of $368,000 to Caltrans for the design and construction of improvements at the SR-118 Tampa Avenue westbound off-ramp. Okay, any comments on this? Um, does someone from staff want to give us a 30-second ex explanation of what this is about? It's obviously not controversial or any cards would have been filled on it. Please. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Ken Husting with LADOT. Real briefly, what happened is the city went through the 2007 call for projects, applied for and received a grant from Metro to go ahead and do improvements at this location. Now, originally, the project had two phases or two elements. One was on the city street, and another portion was to be done on the off-ramp, which is technically Caltrans right-of-way. Now, the city portion was completed through a, a private contractor as part of a mitigation, so all that's left of the project is just what's in the, within the state right-of-way. So working with Caltrans, we all felt it was just the best interest of the project to save the most money in coordination and have Caltrans complete that portion since it is within their right-of-way. And uh, speaking with Metro and Caltrans, all parties have agreed. We've come to an agreement, and we're just seeking council's approval to go ahead and execute this agreement and give them the local match to carry out the implementation of the project. Okay. 
Comments, questions, colleagues? What item is this? This is item number three. Do I have a motion to approve this motion? Good. I move. So moved. Any opposition to it? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we come to special agenda item number one, which is a report relative to the Wilshire Bus Rapid Transit Project. I have over, I don't know, 50, at least 50. And the goal would be to expedite them all. Many of the folks who filled it out did not say if they were for or against. Council member, I got an idea. We adjourn the regular meeting. Oh, adjourn the regular meeting. Go to the special meeting. And now we're in the special meeting. I just have a suggestion, Mr. Rosendahl. I think we should have a 30-minute public hearing, one minute each. If people have a little extra to say, you're a good liberal guy. You could roll with the punches. But get their voices heard. Ms. Dallacon, any problem with that? Anybody else? I agree. You're a good liberal guy. I'm a good liberal. Oh, well, we'll see. Okay. So staff, come up for a quick second and just tell us what we're doing here today. And then without a heavy presentation, just a quick outline so that then we can have the public respond or the public to express itself as to whatever expression, you know, one wants to significantly say. But let's go as quickly as we can through what we are talking about today once again before this committee. Good afternoon, committee. Jaime de la Vega, Department of Transportation. As you know, the peak hour bus lane proposal has been on and off since about 2000. Three EIRs have been completed, included two dedicated EIRs related just to the bus lanes. As you remember, council through this committee adopted a policy supporting peak hour bus lanes end to end in 2007. And also at the direction of this committee, MTA staff completed additional analysis on an alternative for lanes just east of Beverly Hills, excluding the other portions previously proposed. That's referred to as alternative A2. Last month, the MTA board adopted alternative A1, which was the original proposal minus the condo canyon section. Mayor Villaraigosa was at that board meeting and voted yes. Councilman Huizar, who's also a mayoral appointee, abstained. The other two city representatives voted in favor. All three alternatives before you do have net positive impacts. In general, the proposed bus lanes will reduce travel time for bus patrons, but they will have a negative impact on mixed flow travel time. But on aggregate, the benefit for the bus riders, the time savings more than exceeds the mixed flow impacts. You should also know that depending on the alternative that you endorse, between six and nine intersections will have significant impacts. The delay range per intersection is about 15 seconds or less. As you saw in the staff report, this is a policy decision for the council. All three alternatives would be beneficial to the city overall and would be transformative in that they would be the first peak hour bus lanes on a major arterial in the city. All right, so there is alternative one and two and three or just A, B, A1, and A2. What are the differences between them? So alternative A, which is referred to as option one in the report to the committee, is peak hour bus lanes on Wilshire Boulevard between approximately Pico Union and the Santa Monica border, exclusive of the city of Beverly Hills. Alternative A1 is the same project, but it also excludes a section called Condo Canyon between Selby and Comstock in Westwood. And alternative A2 goes from Pico Union to the eastern Beverly Hills border, which is council districts one and four. Just in a historic sense, where is Santa Monica, which is the great city on the edge of the ocean there, and Beverly Hills? Why were they never included in this historically to have a bus only lane from the ocean to downtown? What happened to Santa Monica and what happened to Beverly Hills? Brad, do you want to take that? Brad McAllister, Metro. 
at the time that uh, we were working with the city of Los Angeles and interested in, in looking at the bus rapid transit, we had a very small window of opportunity to compete for a very small start grant. And we were working with the city at that time, and so we were able to develop the grant uh, with, with the city of Los Angeles. And we did not have enough time to bring uh, Beverly Hills or Santa Monica up to speed. But as if, if council approves this, uh, we would hope that seeing a successful project that there may be opportunities in the future to bring both cities in. Uh, Beverly Hills watched how we uh, worked with the city on the signal coordination along Wilshire and ultimately liked how it was working and now we're part of that program. So we would hope that in the future that there would be opportunity to bring them into the fold as well. well what happened to Pam O'Connor? She's a resident of Santa Monica, city council member in Santa Monica. She's been on the board since 2001. It's now 10 years later, 2011. Did anybody ever talk to her and say from the ocean uh, to, to, to downtown? Did anybody get with uh, Beverly Hills, which has been involved in this for the last 10 years too, and get their participation? Why aren't those two towns participating? Because of the limited opportunity that we had, the lim limited window of opportunity that we had to prepare the grant and get support and, and proceed, and we were already working with the city of Los Angeles. If we had delayed, we would have not had the funding, and we wouldn't be here today. Okay, but the grant has now been been going forward, off and on. When I, just to, for the record, when I first came into this office, there was one little segment, which is my little Brentwood segment, uh, and nobody else participated, nobody else played, and all it did was create insanity in that little section there. I get elected, I make a call to all these towns, and I say, you all get involved in this, it makes a lot of sense, a bus only lane. But I can't understand how Santa Monica was left off the hook in Beverly Hills when they have now had 10 years to focus on this, and you've had 10 years to focus on this with those two towns. It was a timing issue. We applied and uh, we were in with city council and you asked us to look at this about April of 2007, and it was shortly thereafter that we, we, we actually didn't have any funding at that time. Uh, we became aware of the very small start grant. We had several weeks to put the application together, so we had to we did not have the opportunity to work with San Beverly Hills or Santa Monica. We already were working with the city of Los Angeles, and the award was approved by the end of 2007. So it was a very short review process, and uh, in order to take advantage of the money, uh, that's how we proceeded. Okay. Then the last question I have, and and, and I, I'm sure the public and, and my colleagues want to say something. Um, is that uh, historically when that was first brought to my attention, I was told that the feds would only give the money if that whole nine point something would be done. Since then, I've heard, no, that it's possible that alternative two, which is from Beverly Hills border to downtown, 5.4 miles or something like that, that there would be the federal funding. They wouldn't stop the project. Am I right or wrong on that point? Well, FTA makes their final decision after both city council and metro approve the project. So, you know, no money is guaranteed until they reviewed what uh, city council and metro, you know, both need to approve the same project. But we have uh, taken a very close look at the guidelines and we've worked with FTA and the, the, the four alternatives that are included in the environmental document uh, uh, to, our, to our best ability meet the very small start criteria. So uh, we have invested the full amount of the grant in each of the four alternatives and we are proposing asking FTA to approve the full grant amount for uh, whichever alternative the city and Metro both collectively agree. Whatever alternative, so that the options then do exist under the funding process. And, and you know, the final decision, you know, FTA basically has been asked at various times during this yeah. process, yeah. will they do this, will they do that? And they've said, no, come back and at the end of the process, submit what you believe is the best project, Metro and city, and uh, we will review it once you have made a decision and we'll go through the criteria ourselves. Metro, please make your best judgment as to whether these four alternatives uh, apply or comply with the very small start requirement. And our best judgment is that they that they do, and uh, that the alternatives before you we would submit uh, in seeking FTA approval. Okay, thank you for that. And DOT question uh, again. I just want the facts. Um, I'm told that the 1.3 miles, whatever it is, from Sentinella to the 405 that uh, is in the Brentwood area there, that right now it takes roughly during peak time, which is from about 7.38 in the morning to 10 in the morning, and from about 3.34 to about 7, and it has changed over the years. It's gotten only worse, of course. Uh, it takes, um, uh, you could walk faster, I'm told, 
than sitting in your car or in your bus at this point to get to the 405. That's question number one. And I want to know when the most recent study has been done of traffic impact. Because the mayor and I were half an hour late to a press conference about the 405 the other day because somebody was out there closing off Sepulveda at the same time and no one could get anywhere. I mean, this is a total gridlock and insanity and paralysis on that 405 area there. I want to know what the latest traffic study has said about the issue of Santa Monica not participating and getting to the 405. And tied into that, I want to know how many buses are, are going downtown with people on it and how many of all of the vehicles are really going to the 405 to go to the valley, to go to the east side, to go to the uh, south side, and to go to the south bay. That little stretch there, just so I can get facts. Uh, Kang Hu with AODOT. Uh, the most recent study we did was in this year. We sent our engineers out there and drive with the traffic. We call it floating car analysis, and we measure the travel time back and forth. We divided uh, the whole project into three segments, and we do have a segment from Centinella to 405. The travel time varies by time of day and also by direction. Sure. Uh, in the morning, it's not really too bad. Um, the travel time um, in the Brentwood area for eastbound direction, it's about seven, to uh, uh, eight minutes. The east. It's, the, it's going into the west in the morning, going into the city of Santa Monica. Yeah, going to the west in the morning, it was about 18.5 uh, minutes, um, and the speed was uh, somewhat slow. It's about five uh, miles per hour. Yeah, I see four miles per hour here yeah. on this report. Uh, 4.9 to be exact. And then... Um, That's in the evening. <coughs> In the evening, that it was uh, that that was the time when the evening travel uh, gets really jammed. Um, and for the eastbound direction, uh, it takes about 18.5 minutes to travel in the evening peak from Centinella to 405. And that's the um, uh, most congested segment. However, with this proposed project, uh, alternative A and A1, we are going to widen and add the fourth lane for the eastbound direction between Barrington and the Bounce close to 405 Railway. So we are adding a lane and make that lane bus only lane during rush hour. What happens to the pedestrians and, and to the shoppers and everything else when the sidewalk is squeezed like that? Yeah, the sidewalk uh, will have to be wide, uh, narrow to uh, eight feet. That's why as part of the recommendation, we're asking the city council to uh, 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 direct DOT working with planning departments to come up with ordinance to allow the A fee sidewalk uh, for about two blocks. And we feel that A fee sidewalk is not desirable, but it can work. Uh, it does comply with the ADA uh, requirement. There are some bus shelters along the sidewalk that need to be consolidated, need to be um, uh, improved. And also the sidewalk, the current sidewalk is in pretty bad shape. Uh, the tree well buckles, and it's not really uh, traversable that well for pedestrians or for uh, handicapped persons. So uh, with the project, it will improve the sidewalk, even though it's a little narrower. I would just say the one question, is it 4,000 buses that go down Wilshire every day, or is it 2,000 buses? Or is it 1,000 since they come back, that's the 2,000? How many, 725 and everybody, how many bus trips a day? It's the busiest bus line it's, it's, west of Manhattan's uh, 387. It's, it's one of our busiest bus lines. We're running buses every couple of minutes. Along but it's the, the busiest in the system. It's the busiest. And, all right, but here's the situation, Mr. Rosenthal. I think we should hear from the public. It's far too long. I, whatever Santa Monica does, whatever Beverly Hills does, we can't change that. This is an opportunity, hopefully, for us to make a difference. And it has to be in phases I want to go. Because if you wanted to see pictures of the moon, I would take you the bus up to the observatory. But if you want to see what the surface of the moon looks like, go down to Wilshire Boulevard and see the horrible condition of Wilshire because of the situation of not paving it for all these years. So therefore, it's very important that we move on this. And I want to thank Public Works Los Angeles and MTA for doing temporary work. But it's a very uncomfortable bus ride existing. So uh, it's very key that we move forward. So how about a robust public comment? And then we could kind of get moving in a direction. Mr. Uh Thank you, Mr. LeBond. Uh, I just want to ask a question. When uh, the application process uh, began, 
um, the city of Los Angeles supported the application? Yes, I believe okay, it was brought back. At the time, to were, at were time. we unaware that Santa Monica and Beverly Hills was not participating? Uh, no, that was part of the original application. And, and so what was the city council and the mayor supported the project, knowing that Santa Monica and Beverly Hills were not involved? Yes. So would the federal government think we're wacko if we didn't move forward with that? Yes. So you don't have to answer that one. <laughs> Okay, any other colleagues before we have the public speak? Ms. Perez. Yeah, just to clarify, because uh, I think we all know that traffic is pretty disastrous uh, in, in the CD11 side of this. When we do this, is this going to make traffic worse? Is it going to make it better? Is it going to stay the same? What do we actually anticipate the impacts to be? We do expect traffic would get worse, and our analysis shows that the Bus travel time will improve 30 to 30 percent or so, but the auto travel time at the opening day, assuming that no one diverts to other streets or take the, uh, take the bus, um, it will, the auto travel time or auto speed would decrease by about 17 to 20 percent. But if there's a 10 percent more shift, then the uh, travel time or uh, uh, decrease will be reduced down to about 17 percent. Now, I would have assumed that without the extra lane, uh, it would it would intuitively seem like if you add an extra lane and you take the buses out of traffic, that that actually should move traffic more smoothly rather than the opposite. Why, why would it not have that impact? We are not able to widen throughout the entire corridor. The widening only would be happening between Barrington and Bounsell. That's the only segment for the eastbound direction. But for other segments, uh, we will have to take a lane during the rush hours. So, and, and is that the worst part traffic-wise, or is it a random part? Why, why just that section? That section, we have the space to widen, but other segment of Worship Boulevard, we don't have enough room. And, and how long is the section that we're widening? Oh, about half mile at the most. Yeah, about half mile. Okay, I, as we have this public hearing, let's stick to the future CLA. Let's get some boards up here so we could probably use technology in the future so people could understand that. Bill, why don't you roll with the public comment? Well, for it. Thank you, staff. Alex, is that Alex Lance? Uh, Dennis uh, Heinman or H I N D M A N? Hillary Norton? Pablo uh, Cirillo? Pablo? How much time, Councilman? One minute, Councilman? One minute? One minute. Those are the first four. Could, could we ask um, Pablo to come on up from H, uh, HOLA? I like the scarf. Where are you, Pablo? Come on. Okay. okay. And then the next four, get ready. Jose Estrada, uh, Barbara Lott uh, Holland, and uh, Gerard Wright, and Dr. Clyde Williams. Okay, that'll be the next four, but let's just start with the first four. Any way you want. Go ahead. Your name first. All right. I'm Dennis Hyman, and um, the, the situation really boils down to Brentwood. Now, if Brentwood traffic currently is moving about this little, it's actually about 60 percent faster than walking speed. If you leave it as is, it will deteriorate because people will be encouraged to drive because that is the mode of travel that's encouraged. So you have money that's allocated by the government to improve it, so, to um, enable more people to move through that corridor. So they're, they're really, it's a, it, to me, it's a no-brainer that you go for that rather than just letting it deteriorate, which it is, both the road conditions and not being able to accommodate enough people through the corridor. Uh, obviously, there's going to be people that are objecting because of, there's a change in their life. It, it was going to be sudden because there's dramatic change by adding two uh, bus-only lanes, but it, leaving it as is, it will, it will deteriorate. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Alexis Lance, Los Angeles County Bicycle Co Coalition. We are here to today to support the 7.7 .7 mile alternative approved by MTA. While we would prefer to see the whole project move forward, we support the decision made by MTA and encourage you to do the same. The Wilshire bus only lanes offer greater mobility to transit riders during the peak travel hours and to those who need to travel Wilshire Boulevard by bicycle as well. Um, this is a route identified in the bike plan of which you have all been leaders on. Yes. Um, and by creating these peak period travel lanes, you'll be creating greater accommodation for cyclists along the Wilshire Corridor. Uh, we cannot create a more livable city if we do not move projects like this, move, move projects like this forward. We need, we need to prioritize transit if we want to create a world-class city that provides greater mobility options that not only provide for the 82,000 people who ride buses on Wilshire now, but to encourage more people to use the bus, ride bicycles, use future subway, and the new 405 carpool lanes. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate that. Please, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, council members. We are also here in name, please. My name is Hillary Norton, and Norton. I'm the executive director of Fast Fixing Angelino Stuck in Traffic. And we are also here to support the 7.7 .7 mile route. This is not only good for transportation, but it shows that we, as a city, are serious about using federal money in the most efficient way possible. We have an opportunity not only to pave our streets, but to add a lane in some of the thorniest areas of our traffic. Let's take this time to use that money wisely to show that while we can ask for billions of dollars for rail, we can also efficiently spend the millions of dollars for the busways. In addition, when Metro took the position of the 7.7 .7 mile route, they said they wanted a review after 30, after three months as to all of the segments. If that segment at Brentwood does not work after that three months, we have a whole new lane, whole new paving, and we will have shown that we are using efficiently the money we asked for. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, as as uh, Pablo is about to speak, we could Jose Estrada come on up and Barbara Lott Holland, uh, uh, Gerald Wright, and, and then Dr. Clyde Williams. I will be translating for him. Thanks, sir. Um, I prefer to express in Spanish. Eh, señores, yo creo que tenemos que tener visión para una oportunidad, tanto como los que somos eh, usuario del BAS, queremos engrandecer, tanto como negocios, como usuarios, y también queremos engrandecer en los diferentes eh, aspectos de la vida cultural, y por lo tanto, soporto este espacio que se dé el proyecto de los siete puntos infracción de vías para el servicio de transportes urbanos. So um, I believe that we should have a vision for transportation and that we should have a vision to improve businesses, to improve cultural life, to improve life overall, and that's why I, I, I am supporting this bus only lane project full implementation. Y nuevamente, eh, esperamos que ustedes tomen conciencia y que todos tengamos una superación como pueblo y como ciudad. So I hope that you take consciousness of this fact and that we have a, a better city and a better environment. Thank you, sir. Muchas gracias. Um, Jose Estrada, uh, Barbara, Lot Hillard, Gerard Wright, and Dr. Clyde Williams. Jose Estrada is not here? Okay, thank you. Good morning. My name is Barbara Lot Holland, co-chair of the Bus Riders Union and a resident of South Los Angeles, Bernard Parks District. And I am here to ask that this committee support MTA's recommendation of the A1, which is the 7.7 .7 mile project, while we still feel that the full project is valid. This project, as it would, ensure that people are from Los Angeles use the Wilshire Corridor, particularly South LA, going both ways. They use this corridor for education, health, and for job opportunities. If we do not secure this project now, phase two will never come to pass. The floodgates will open and the not in my backyard syndrome will continue that we will never fulfill this bus only lane going to the sea. Right now the city is facing massive unemployment and a budget deficit. This project with the $23 million will secure over 100 jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that uh, very much. That, you were Barbara, yes? Yes. Thank you. 
What happened to Gerald Wright? Okay, Gerard Wright's right oh, here. Great. Good to see you. All right, good afternoon, uh, Transportation Committee members. Uh, Gerard Wright, Angeles Chapter of Sierra Club Transportation Committee Co-Chair. Just want to give support to Metro's recommendation of Alternative A-1. We recognize that the western portion of the alignment has a lot of consternation between Condo Canyon and Brentwood. I want to iterate why the Brentwood portion is so important to this project. We know that traffic flows reasonably well through Condo Canyon for buses, but its backup is west of the 405 freeway, the, count, the area you represent, Mr. Rosenthal. The BRT's new eastbound dedicated bus lane from Barrington to the 405 will improve traffic for automobiles by getting buses out of the other lanes. This benefit will be lost if it is not included. So we'll give no alternative to folks wanting to get out of their cars through that very congested section. Most importantly, bus lanes west of the Westwood VA station for the future Purple Line subway will be very important to serve these new riders coming farther west to our neighbors in Santa Monica, Malibu, and, and the rest in Brentwood to begin looking at long-term visioning for building a transportation network and not just a piecemeal set of projects. Thank you all very much, and I hope you uh, make the right decision. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Raymond Klein, Nancy Friedman, Sandy Brown, and Jerry Brown. Where's Jerry Brown? Where's that governor? <laughs> Dealing with his deficit, folks. <laughs> it's another Jerry Brown, though, of course. All right, we have, again, I mentioned um, Ray Klein. Okay. Nancy Friedman, Sandy Brown, and Jerry Brown. And then the next group uh, is Constance, uh, forgive me. Lapidus. Very good. Okay. Uh, and then there's uh, Jan uh, Reichman and, and Stephen Resnick, too. Okay. okay. Please, uh, sir, your name? Right. Raymond Klein, Brentwood. You should have in front of you a excerpt from the April 2007 DOT memo to City Council which said in 2007 that the area between Barrington and Sentinella was not especially problematic for bus, seat, bus speeds, so removal of the bus lanes may not have a significant impact on bus travel times. If you can exempt Condo Canyon for that reason, you have to exempt this area of Brentwood for the same reason it doesn't matter to bus times. That's what they said in 2007. The widening uh, of the area between Barrington and Federal is illegal. It violates the city plan, which requires 12-foot sidewalks, not eight. The curb lane is required to be 13 feet, not 12. The, I have nowhere near enough time to tell you what's wrong with the EIR. My draft of a complaint, if you approve A1 instead of A2, is already 18 pages long. Thank you. Sir. I'm Jerry Brown. Uh, if the goal of the DOT and MTA is to improve traffic, then it seems to me there's only one sane solution to the problem, and that, unfortunately, is an amalgamation of A, A1, and A2. I believe that uh, removal of a bus lane or non-implementation of a bus lane west of La Cienega makes a great deal of sense. Removal of the jut outs in the Condo Canyon area makes no sense whatsoever, but improvements along the area around the 405 is enormously important to the success of any implementation that will improve bus traffic and automobile traffic. And the dollars saved in uh, not removing jut outs in the Condo Canyon can be moved to other areas of Wilshire Boulevard. So it seems to me that the combination of the three plans is the one that makes the most sense. Thank you. Sandy Brown, I'm here on behalf of Homebay Westwood property owners, but work with a coalition of over uh, 10,000 Westwood residents, including three homeowners and associations in 13 high-rise buildings. We hired a consultant, Raju Associates, who determined that there would be no improvement in bus transit time from Comstock to Selby because buses today travel at posted speed limits and do not experience congestion or delay. Um, we also understand that from his study that ridership would not be affected. However, negative impacts in the Westwood segment would be substantial. There are five religious institutions, including schools in this unique segment, 56 driveways requiring access and deliveries to residential buildings, five loading areas, and 18 intersections. 
um, we ask that your support A1 alternative, which was adopted by the MTA board uh, in May. The one thing I wanted to say was Zev, Zev made a very good suggestion at that board meeting, which was whatever they end up with, to come back to the board uh, two months after completion of the project to let everyone know how it's working. Because within two months' time, it makes sense you, would, you should be able to find out how things are going by then. And how we got from the Golden Mile to Condo Canyon, I don't know. But I like Golden Mile better. Thank you very much for that. And can we ask Constance to come up and, and, and uh, Jan uh, Reichman, the empty seat so far, and, and Stephen uh, Resnick? Uh, yes, ma'am. Nancy Friedman, Brentwood Community Council. Um, I've given you a picture of the last bus lane that was put into Brentwood, the aborted one. Um, as you can see, all the cars are waiting to get uh, somewhere. And, and no, yes, and um, the bus lane is empty. Now, picture this: you got your buses zipping through here, and they get to the 405, where all the cars merge and everything comes together, where people are getting on the freeway, and the, all these cars you see on the left, and then all of a sudden they have to merge with them. So all the time they've made, they are now sitting at the 405 freeway, waiting to, to merge into traffic. This is not well thought out. We have another project in Brentwood right now that was not well thought out, and it's a light that cannot be activated because uh, the city did not perform it properly so that it could actually uh, work out in our community. Cars, bikes, and buses can travel together. This is something that has to be good for everybody, not just bus riders, not just car riders. Hybrid cars are going to be on the road in the future. They're healthy. They're much healthier. They're like the buses. And A2 is the way to go. Please. Thank you. Uh, please, um, sir. And could we ask uh, Lauren Cole to come up for when, when Nancy Friedman gets? Stephen Resnick, president of the Westwood homeowners association and also uh, joining with the uh, coalition asking you to uh, uh, approve uh, option A1 and forward that to the city council. We believe the goals of the project are, are laudable and uh, should go forward, but uh, eliminating the uh, segment of the uh, uh, from Comstock to Selby is the way to go. That would create a uh, very detrimental effect on uh, on the neighborhood surrounding neighborhood with uh, driving parking onto the uh, neighborhood and backing up a very a number of intersections and also as you've heard before the buses move fine the the way they are there is no issue based on our uh, engineering study so we ask you to approve a1 thank you thank you ma'am Jan Reichman Comstock Hills Homeowners Association we border Wilshire Boulevard our organization strongly supports the Metro approved option which exempts the stretch from Comstock to Selby. This allows construction to start immediately, putting people to work and improving transit for bus riders while protecting residential neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Constance Bokitis. <clears throat> I'm a lifelong resident of Westwood, current PTA president at Fairburn Public Elementary School located in Westwood, and a director on the Westwood Neighborhood Council. I greatly appreciate the Metro Board's sensibility in approving the 7.7 mile option, which excludes Comstock to Selby from the bus line constraints, alternative A1. I urge this committee to support and approve the Metro approved project which will allow construction to begin immediately, put people to work, improve transit while protecting residential neighborhoods. As I have said before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Common sense dictates the Metro approved Project A1 as the way to go. I'm confident that my neighbors and fellow parents share this position. Thank you. Thank you for that. And can we ask David Holtzman to come on up and, and Marilyn of K-R-E-L-L. And I, I don't know if it's Bath or Bet Rees, R E E S. But Bert, I think, if that's right, Bert. let me see that. Bert Reed. Bert, we're going to send you back to Silmar High with your penmanship. Yeah. Come on up, Bert. Bart. Bart. Come on up. Bert. I know. And I'm going to get glasses so I can say Bart Reed, Bert. Yes, yeah, Bart Reed. I'm sorry, Bart. It's my fault. My fault. Please Bill. go for it. Good afternoon. Um, Lauren Cole, I'm here from Brentwood, and I'd like to ask for you to support alternative A2, and I wanted to give you a few data points. 
First of all, the time savings from bus riders by adding any bus lanes east, uh, west of Beverly Hills is only three to four minutes, of which one to two minutes is in the Brentwood section. I would maintain that's not enough to get any new bus riders to out of their cars onto the bus so it doesn't meet the objectives of the project. Um, secondly, the EIR proposes widening six blocks of Wilshire Boulevard west of the 405 out of 40 blocks of bus lanes, just to give you an idea. Clearly, this is just recreating the trial results that already failed, and we just have to take the money to pull the bus lanes out again. Um, then point three, um, the EIR underestimates how bad the impact will be on drivers because it says the drivers west of the 405 will just find alternative routes. There are no alternative routes west of the 405 that are already that aren't already gridlocked. So we'd suggest spending the money um, on the other sections of Wilshire that really need it, not putting in bus lanes west of the 405. Could we ask uh, Miguel uh, Vargas to come up and, and take that seat? And could we have your name for the record and good, good afternoon? You. Me. Yeah. Hello, I'm Marilyn Krell. I am president of the South Brentwood Residents Association. It is our neighborhood that has been impacted greatly uh, by the uh, trials that were uh, held previously. Uh, we already have uh, uh, very congested streets. It was a disaster through our area. Our area includes the uh, border is Wilshire, Federal, and Sentinella. Um, I'd also like to mention that the increase of, uh, of, um, of uh, the widening of the south side of Wilshire uh, is only going to be two blocks, which is one-tenth of a mile, only on the south side of the street. The bus lanes are proposed for the entire stretch between Sentinella and Federal, a, dis a distance of 0.9 miles on both sides of the street, totaling 1.8 miles. And the trials were actually only in one direction. So this is going to be twice as bad. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, please, your name for the record. You're up. Bart. Oh, hi, Bill. Uh, hello, council members. I'm uh, Bart Reed, executive director of the Transit you Coalition. You can call him Phil, you know, Pardon? if you want. Because we I can call him Phil or Bill, but I'm losing my seconds here. No, I'll give um, it back to you. Thanks. <laughs> Anyways, hi, everybody. Um, as, a, as an issue of public benefit here, and I, I have to mention, I actually learned how to write at uh, Grant High School in Van Nuys, uh, Silmar was uh, afterthought. Um, there's a lot of public benefits to the bus only lane project. I think it's important to understand that there's environmental benefits, there's job benefits. Working on the street brings union jobs into our community, rebuilding the streets with a lifetime of activity. One really needs to look at what's going through on the street, how we get to the jobs. It's the high rises on Wilshire Boulevard where the people are going to work. It's the apartments near Wilshire Boulevard where people are leaving to get to their jobs in other part of the city. One only needs to look at the auto throughput per hour. In each direction, you can get 1,200 cars per hour through on those lanes. It's never going to change. But with the buses, you can add buses every 30 seconds, every 20 seconds, every 10 seconds. Bus throughput right now when this project starts up is somewhere between 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000 riders per hour versus the maximum amount of cars can ever go through there will be 2,400 in both directions. Congestion point is cri critical congestion point is Brentwood 405 and Westwood, not Santa Monica. Beverly Hills accommodates buses with no parking during the rush hour, and I've already mentioned the jobs and the environmental benefits, we recommend supporting A or A1, the 7.7 .7 mile alternative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sorry. Uh, as the next two speakers are about to speak, how about Allison Manos coming up and Juan uh, uh, Matsu? Sir. Uh, David Holtzman, let's get a couple of things straight. First of all, the bus route west of the 405 does not go through Brentwood. It goes through West LA 90025. Brentwood is just north of that, and the EIR completely ignored Brentwood's concerns that it would divert, the bus lane would divert traffic through Brentwood and completely disrespected Brentwood in that way. So it's no wonder that Brentwood last night voted to authorize a lawsuit if you do not go with option A2. They also heard from their senior lead officer that there's been an, an increase in assault with a deadly weapon, i.e. cars, because of the congestion around the freeway traffic, the freeway construction. Now, the other thing to get straight is that this is not about 
us against buses, not liking buses. I'm a bus rider. I ride the 720 sometimes, but the traffic there is too slow. I've seen it when you tried it last time. It did not work. Right turns blocked the buses. They didn't go faster. Pedestrians blocked the right turns, which blocked the buses. They didn't go faster. Uh, so it doesn't work. That's why we're opposed. You need a center lane solution or something rational. We had so much more air pollution and noise pollution and hatred and fear like that assault with a deadly weapon when we had the lane there last time sir. that we don't want you to do it again. Tuesday, too. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, sir. <clears throat> My name is uh, Miguel Vargas. I'm a resident policy student at SC, and I'm just here to echo what all the MTA folks have been saying and what all the sensible people in this room have been saying, that the, the benefits of, of moving forward with 1A outweigh the costs. And, I'm, and I ask you guys to go ahead and pass 1A. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. And could we ask Morgan uh, uh, Wen to come up and, and Crystal uh, uh, McMillan at, as well? Good afternoon. Hi. Um, I'm Allison Manis at the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. Um, and I want to just echo what my colleague Alexis said. Um, it's re we think it's really important that uh, Alternative A um, or at least A1 is approved. Um, the, the needs for regional mobility to, to be addressed on the heaviest transit corridor in the nation need to outweigh um, what one neighborhood association thinks. Um, we support um, a lot of the students and low-wage workers that both use transit and bike across the, um, all the way um, the 8.7 miles. Um, mode shift will happen. The uh, concerns about traffic are from those that assume that other folks won't shift and get on these, these efficient, fast-moving buses. And we think that this is the, exactly the kind of infrastructure that encourages people to take buses and bike more. Um, and we thank the T Committee for its past leadership on the bike plan, and we won't want to waste the opportunity to make this deadly corridor into a, a bike-friendly street. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Sir. Hello. My name is Juan Matute. I direct a research program on sustainable transportation and land use at one of the larger research universities in town, but I'm not here today speaking on behalf of that center or the institution. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on level of service impacts and significant impacts. I want to discuss how we measure traffic impacts. Um, there's been three, me three different methods that have been used to analyze traffic impacts in this study. And all are perceptions of service quality, trying to answer the question, what, what, what grade would a driver give this roadway? A shortcoming of all of these methods is that they ignore passengers in vehicles and in buses, cyclists and pedestrians. As a result, the delay experienced by passengers on a crowded 50-passenger bus will receive just 2% the consideration of somebody driving alone. When you think about transportation in Los Angeles and who's riding the buses, transportation sustainability goals, and congestion reduction, it's difficult to see how a method which penalizes people for taking the bus, riding bicycles, or carpooling will serve the future of Los Angeles. Thank you for that. Um, for the next two speakers speak, uh, could I ask uh, Joanne Gaspak and uh, Channing uh, Martinez to also come up? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Morgan Wyan. I'm an attorney with the Natural Resources Defense Council, the NRDC, out of our office in Santa Monica. And I'm here to encourage the committee to adopt the 7.7 .7 mile alternative. We are, of course, in favor of the largest bus, the longest bus only lane possible, because the longer it is, the more the bus can pick up speed, reducing travel time for bus passengers. The 5.4 mile alternative will cut this project's bus time benefits by several minutes. According to the EIREA, it will cut it by as much as 10 or more minutes. Yes, this project will increase traffic for cars, but only by a few seconds at some intersections. To even begin to address LA's air pollution, we all know we need to get people out of their cars and into transit and to improve bus conditions for existing riders. The 7.7 .7 mile alternative will do both of those. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Crystal McMillan, and I'm a member of the Bus Riders Union. And I'm here today to urge this committee to support the Wilshire bus only lane option adopted by the MTA board. I'm a veteran, as are both my parents. And in addition to the 10 years I've spent tra traveling daily from downtown LA to West LA for work, I also used it to take my father to the veterans hospital for medical care. And while on the bus, I've met many veterans who depend on this service for access to jobs and health care. I've seen firsthand every day the traffic problems that would be helped by a bus only lane. Over the past few years, everyone's been talking about global climate change and what we can do to make it better. And this is the first thing that LA has done that will impact emissions in this city. 
Every day the health of the citizens are being impaired by car emissions. It's the biggest polluter. I've watched my young niece struggle with asthma daily. With this project, you have the potential to not only improve traveling conditions for the 90,000 people who are on the bus, but you're also going to begin to address air quality for 10 million citizens of L.A. County. For the first time, L.A. can lead the nation, and that's how we always were. We were always the first, hey, Clark, and I think we should be the first with the bus-only lanes. So please adopt the 7.7 .7 miles. And I do a little, would like to say all these people in Brentwood and Westwood who say there's no uh, improvement and that there's, uh, it's not worth it for the bus-only lanes, how many of them have spent a week on the bus taking it to work and having to get there on time? I think that three to four minutes can make a huge difference. And that's just a, a conservative estimate by staff. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, my name is Joanna Gaspar. I'm a member of the Bus Riders Union. I'm a student, and I use the buses daily. During the times I use the 720, I see college and high school students getting to getting the early buses at 6 in the morning to get to school on time, which is at 8. I see veterans trying to get to their appointments on time at the BA hospital. I want to be able to travel less time rather than simply sit on the bus for two hours. The bus only lane will be reducing 12 to 15 minutes of any travel time across the city. Rosanda and the Transportation Committee adopt and approve the full 8.7 mile project or the MTA recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and could I ask um, the next five speakers to come on up? Of course, I didn't mention your names. Uh, Ryan uh, Lehman. Um, are you chatting? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and then we got Judy Redman, uh, Clifford Moore, in that order. Go for it, sir. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Channing. I'm a member of the Bus Riders Union and the Clean Air, Clean Lungs, Clean Buses campaign. Uh, and I've lived in uh, Mr. Park's district for uh, all my life so far. Um, I, among others, depend on the bus to get to school to work. Um, it's common for the bus to arrive to the bus stop 15 minutes late on average. Uh, the increased annual cut bu cuts to buses since 2007 has made it harder for working class students like me to have a fair access to education. It's been six years and still counting waiting for this bus only lane on the most used corridor and bus line in Los Angeles County. What's really ridiculous is that the money is already allocated to the project. Uh, it comes for, it, it's common for folks to think that people like me in Bernard Park's uh, district do not um, care about the environment, but we do. Um, so a bus only lane for me and others in my community not only means getting to school on time, it also means a step in the right direction for the city um, that is the seventh highest polluter in the nation due to the auto. A bus only lane is a step towards improving the bus system in, MTA, in a time when MTA has now cut close to 700,000 hours of bus service in the last two years with the excuse that there is not enough money to operate buses, there should be no doubt about this project, a project once again to improve the bus system. MTA's actions, as well as Mr. Rosenthal's West Side exemption, are blatant forms of transit racism. I urge you to take a vote against the West Side exemption today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good, after mm. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Clifton Moore. I'm a Vietnam vet, three honorable discharges. And I'm retired right now. And I'd like to emphasize that something that we all know, many veterans use the 720 transit line to, uh, to um, uh, go to and from the um, VA hospital up and down Wilshire. And uh, as, a, as a bus rider and a veteran myself, I'm in full agreement with the 7.7 .7 mile implementation of this new project. And uh, I also urge all of you, those of you, Mr. Rosendahl, I understand you're a veteran, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. I urge all of you, we're not asking for anything special. We're just asking for your help. Many of us are dependent on the 720 and other lines as we traverse Wilshire looking for jobs, getting to and from our jobs, getting to and from the 500 building to take care of our medical, our medical needs. So we're asking that you uh, agree, you and the MTA board agree to the 7.7 .7 mile uh, a bus only project. After all, we don't want to lose our federal funding. 
as a veteran, I'll say this, and uh, I'm not a rocket scientist, but if I had to die for my country today, I would. So I'm asking, help us. Help us. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, sir, for your service, too. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hello. Um, good afternoon. My name is Judy Redman. I'm a member of the Bus Riders Union. I've been struggling for six long years to get this bus-only lane passed. I'm also, more importantly, born and raised in Baldwin Hills, a, a citizen of Lamert Park. Yes, I am asking you, Council Member Parks, to take this amazing opportunity to pass a motion to get the 7.7 .7 bus-only lane passed and to encourage your people here to also have it passed. This, you are my representative. I am asking you. I am also a representative of a city, a part of the city that has had a huge increase in unemployment. I have been searching for jobs, a lot of them on Wilshire, off Wilshire Boulevard. I take the 720. Do you know how embarrassing it is to tell you you're stuck in traffic on a bus? One of the things they ask for in the ads is to have a reliable source of transportation. I cannot honestly say I have that right now. You can make that happen. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Ms. Yang, please uh, come on up. And Eric uh, Roman. Uh, How many more cards you got, Bill? Because I, I, uh, I, I have four more after. Great, that. good, That's super. What we're doing now. Mr. Walsh, too. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Sure, your name? Uh, Ryan Lehman. I'm an urban planner and co-chair of the Green LA Coalition Transportation Work Group. I strongly support the Metro Board of 7.7 .7 mile um, alternative A1 for all of the, the various reasons stated by others today. I also just wanted to point out that I believe that many of the opponents from Brentwood are basing their opposition on failures associated with the previous demonstration project. And I just wanted to point out to, to all of you the analysis done by the LADOT on page three of the memo that you have. It states that the traffic delays associated with the previous project will be mostly mitigated with the addition of a fourth eastbound lane with this bus lane project. And so I therefore, you know, we have the funds in hand to do this. I don't know of other solutions to traffic on the west side right now. The subway is 10 years away. So I would strongly urge you to take advantage of these funds. Um, and now that we've learned the lessons from that other demonstration project and support the full 7.7 .7 mile route. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, flying in HollywoodHighlands.org, United Riders of Los Angeles, the largest, if not the largest, the oldest transit rider organization in Los Angeles. Who, every, bus riders union, what happened? A few days ago, it was the 9.7. Now you want to do the 7.7. Uh, .7. Let me tell you, they say they can get this through Congress, get the money after you cut the route. You act as if it's some faceless bureaucrat that's going to make the decision. The decision will be made by the regional area administrator in San Francisco. His name is Leslie Rogers. I've known him for 15 years. If he takes my calls, he'll take your call. He'll take your call at L.A. Times, Ari Bloomcats, and you ask the man who's going to make the decision whether he's going to allow you to do this, and he will say no. And I, I'm an anti-racist, and the homeowner's Reich will not win, and the politically correct racist Liberals will not win, and I don't care if the Bus Riders Union caves in. Some of us don't. HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. I'm going to go ahead of uh, Ms. Yang. No, no, no. Go ahead. You're next. And as she's uh, speaking, and before Eric, could I have Nancy Lawrence come on up and Stephanie Taylor and, and Arthur Patel? Okay. Go for it. Yes. Sun Young Yang with the Bus Riders Union. Um, I've been at this meeting various times for the last seven years. And we have championed for the full project, the full project, which originally was actually from the downtown to the sea. And so we agree that the most ideal project and the most comprehensive project would be a project that goes from downtown to the sea. But at the same time, we know that things go step by step in this county, in the city. And Council Member Rosendahl, from the get-go, when we applied for the federal funding, you knew 
that the city of Beverly Hills and the city of Santa Monica were not included in this. But you gave your approval, you gave your support on, on this project. So uh, at this point, it seems very contradictory now. You're saying let's eliminate the west side out of the project. We believe that the comprehensive project is the best project still. But given the federal funding timeline, it's due on September. There's not going to be enough time to do another round of discussion if we go with any other alternative that's differing from the MTA board at this point. We don't have the time. And I don't want to lose the entire baby <laughs> um, um, or whatever, the entire project or some part of the project because we are insistent upon the full project even though we don't have the timeline for it. That's why we're urging you to go for the 7.7, .7, stay with the MTA recommendation because we need to meet the September timeline for the full funding agreement of the federal government. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Sarah. Good afternoon. Also, uh, Eric Roman with the Bus Riders Union. Um, so because of the West Side, because of the concerns raised by the West Side, um, LADOT and MTA staff have now done two AIRs. In addition to the EIR, they did additional study of the traffic impacts both for cars and for autos. What they found is there's a whopping 90, a 49 second uh, uh, traffic cost for cars in Brentwood, 49 seconds. So 49 seconds is the evidence that they have behind their lawsuit. You have an EIR proof, you have a, um, a lawsuit proof EIR on your side. Um, the flip side is, if you concede today and accept 5.4 miles um, as the way to go forward, you risk uh, jeopardizing $10 million in federal funding. Um, like Mr. Walsh, we too have spoken with Leslie Rogers, uh, who's the administrator of the FTA in San Francisco. He told us over the phone that there's been no commitment uh, from the FTA to guarantee the funding for the project the full funding for the project if the project is cut down. So therefore, although again, we think that the, the best alternative uh, available right now is the 8.7 mile alternative. We believe that the best uh, path forward today is for this committee to recommend to the full council the MTA approved 7.7 .7 mile option to move forward to complete the 7.7 .7 miles and we will continue fighting for the full bus lane in the future. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, sir. We have Nancy Lawrence here, Stephanie Taylor. Uh, do we have, uh, uh, our, is it Anter Patel? How do, what's the first name? Encore. Encore. I haven't seen you in a while. And, and uh, Sierra Lynn? Here we go. Okay. Yes, ma'am, you're first. No, oh, going okay. that Okay. Thank Good. you. Um, Good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Taylor. I'm with the Green LA Coalition. And I'm here because this uh, project has been in a priority for the Green Alley Coalition for the past three years, and we really urge the council to support the 7.7 mile alternative. And I want to just emphasize uh, two reasons why it's been such a priority for the Green Alley Coalition. Bus selling lanes is a critical component of a reliable transportation system that we so desperately need in LA. And in order for us to address traffic congestion and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we, we, we need a, we need a, a better trans, a public transportation system. Cutting the project to 5.4 miles will undermine the full benefits of the project and will, um, likely set up the project for failure. I want to mention other Green LA members that aren't here that sign on, uh, that support Communities for a Better Environment, Los Angeles Walks, Environment Now, LA Taxi Workers Alliance, Coalition for Clean Air, Heal the Bay, Urban Samirs, and Tree People. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comments. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. I'm Nancy Lawrence with the Bus Riders Union, and I'm also a resident of Brentwood. I've been living in Brentwood a long time in one place. And before that, I lived on the Wilshire Corridor. Now, i got to be frank and say, I think there is a bit of racism and classism in the area where I live. They don't want to see a lot of poor people and darker-skinned people going by underneath their noses in these tall towers. I'll be frank about that. Secondly, we need these bus-only lanes. One reason is because of climate change. But another reason is because when I get on the bus, I walk four blocks down to Wilshire on Berryton, and I get on that bus, and whenever there is, they're fixing potholes because of the crazy weather, it there's, there gets held up, especially during rush hours. And it just slows things down. We need a bus only lane to speed things up, just for practical things, to go to the doctors, to take elderly people like I had to do to the doctors, which I did today. That's why I was late. So we need bus only lanes all over the place. So we got to start, and also cutting these bus only lanes messes. Okay, cutting these bus only lanes does mess things up, and it would set it up to failure. 
Great. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Sir. Uncle Patel, um, this is such a symbolic event, not just for the politics in Los Angeles City, but nationally and globally, where the 80,000 people that take the bus down Wilshire don't even know this meeting's going on. And the decision you make here, they probably won't even know. But you know that it would benefit them. And as elected representatives, it is your duty to stand up for those people that don't know that this meeting is going on, to act in their best interest. The people that came out here from Brentwood, they're organized. They vote in your elections. Not in yours. But, <laughs> but they are more organized than these people that haven't had this opportunity. And a lot of this is about that opportunity. And it's just... It's painful to see that it comes down to these. You're supposed to act in the best interest of the people. Appreciate your comments. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Serena Lynn. I'm a staff attorney with Public Council, and we work out of Councilman LaBonge's district. For over 40 years, Public Council has been defending the civil rights of working families, immigrants, children, and communities of color. This bus only lane is for everyone students, workers, and Westsiders. Every year, we also represent hundreds of vets who are returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. These are vets who need to go to the Veterans Administration to access medical and other necessary social services. Many of the vets who need the bus to go to the VA, we've seen them over the years constantly have to miss appointments because of delays. Our vets deserve better. While we would love to see the full bus only lane, what we ask this committee to do today is to pass A1. What we are particular, particularly opposed to is the 40% west side carve out. In our view, this would raise significant civil rights concerns related to disability access and it would put in jeopardy the entirety of the federal funding for this project. Therefore, as we said to KPCC, support the 720 line bus only lane all the way through with only the one mile carve out exemption. This isn't just about transportation. The 720 is a lifeline from Skid Row to Hope. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody's comments, all 50-plus folks who spoke. Uh, that's the democracy at its best. Okay. Um, Mr. Labonge. Mr. Koretz. Thank you. Um, yeah, this, this is somewhat of a hard call. I, I'm leaning right now towards the uh, A1 proposal, partly because I think it's the most likely to be approved by the MTA because they've already approved is less likely to screw up their timeline. Um, I think there's also a, a positive to the fact that this will pay for some free widening. Um, my concern is if it's a disaster as it was uh, in previous years that we're clearly able to, to legally backtrack from that and that's, that's a question that I'll, I'll want to ask. Um, I'm inclined to think because of the widening it would be better than it was last time. Um, I'm inclined to think because it's a longer project, not just a little section, that it would be better than last time. Um, and I think for sure, there's no question in my mind, it will save a lot of time. And the picture we saw with traffic stacked up in a wide open lane, it's very clear that a bus will be able to save many minutes as it zips through a section which otherwise it would be stacked up so badly that you almost want to pick up your car um, to get through it. Uh, the, the two questions I have, um, one, I have a question about the speed of this. The, the advantage to A1 is that it might speed something up. If there's a potential of a lawsuit, that potentially could slow things down. So I want to ask a, a city attorney how practical we think of that as a threat and what that could do to the project. My other concern is, Although I think it's likely traffic is not as bad as it was last time, there needs to be a clear out. So I would want you know, a clear validation from someone that uh, three months out, two months out, if we see it and it's just as bad as last time and we've worsened traffic to that degree, that we have the ability to back out that section. Um, so those are my, my two concerns. And I don't know if we have a representative from the city attorney's office that might be able to, to answer that particular question um, about whether uh, if a lawsuit was uh, actually implemented, um, 
whether that could cause the same delay and, and problem that uh, uh, not approving A1 might cause. And so I don't know who might best answer that. City attorney, Normally transportation staff. I'm sorry, I can't go to the mic. Obviously, lawsuits always can impact a project. It just depends on the merits of the particular lawsuit. And I obviously have not studied this particular issue, and I would have to defer or actually get somebody here who has worked closely on this. Uh, I'm not really speaking to the merits. Let's let's say for the sake of argument, the lawsuit had no merit whatsoever. The question is, can that still stall a project by substantial months? Or would would the approval process still move forward? Well, normally what happens is they go in for an injunction. The court generally speeds that along. So no, I into the mic. Meritless lawsuit. It's not going to slow up the project for any significant period Talk of time. Talk into the mic. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. If it's a meritless lawsuit, it's not going. No judge is going to allow a meritless lawsuit to slow up a major project. And and right now, as I said, I have not seen all of this, so I can't speak to the specifics of this particular project. But I think you're, there's always the potential that somebody's going to file a lawsuit in anything the council does. And you know, whether you want to base your decision on that or not is up to you. Well, it's certainly a factor because we're trying to look at what makes this move the fastest. So if on one side, approving something MTA is already on board with saves time, um, but it brings a lawsuit, uh, if on the other side, a proposal that's a little more difficult from that point of view, but would be less likely to, to result in lawsuits. It's a question. I mean, if we wind up expecting lawsuits either way, then maybe it's not a question. But it's uh, it's something we should look at. The other question I had was, if it turns out to be such a disaster after three months that we say, oh my God, it's just as bad as last time. You know, we can't put these people through this. Um, What's right the problem? Lane, right. Are are we able to uh, to say okay, we tried it, it worked uh, up through Westwood, but when you get west of the 405, this is a disaster. Uh, what happens? How are we able to back out? Um, are we not able to back out? What's what's our choice there? So you know, DOT's intention is to report back to the council on a regular basis, especially during the early weeks of months. So we would anticipate probably doing informal weekly reports right during the first month, have a one-month report, two-month, three-month, and then six, nine, twelve, so we can look at this over time. You know, if there are dramatic problems, we would be looking to make corrections or modifications to the program, which may include removal of segments, but that would not be our first choice, and I'll defer to Brad at MTA about uh, FTA's uh, perspective on whether or not the city maintained the entire project for what amount of time. Well, I think that uh, FTA certainly is looking at this project with great interest as a nationwide leadership in the BRT program, and they work very closely with us. Um, there are several components I want to point out to you that are, I think, really important to the success of the project. Part of the grant will be going to outreach during the construction process as well as pre-opening of the project. So awareness of, of what's going on in the corridor is really important. And after completion of the project, we'll be working with DOT. DOT, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll be monitoring the project day to day in real time and be able to make adjustments in real time as conditions change. Uh, as Jaime is pointing out, uh, I, I know DOT will be looking at the progress of the, the project once it's open, if there are things that are beyond tweaking, and we will too. And we would be work, work closely with FTA to make adjustments. And you know, I can't speak for FTA, but uh, this is kind of a demonstration of a new concept nationwide. And uh, we would make our best case with Metro to uh, make the, any changes that we needed. Uh, clearly, I think we would need to show that there was a real need for change. Uh, but I think that if there was, the FTA would work with us. That would be our hope. So, so, I mean, my concern is we do have some history. I think. Part of the negative reaction is based on that history, where we we did it in a really stupid way. We had a little segment, and it was it was a disaster. Um, I think the chances of that are slim, but existent. So I'd want I'd want an answer that told us yes, if this is a disaster, 
we're not going to permanently inflict this on on the people of the area so that we i want to know legally that we have the ability to to pull out of that if everyone can see that it isn't working in that section well they are city streets so you know what would be most at risk would be whether fta would request any funding back but we think that if uh the city made a good faith effort uh, to implement this program successfully as possible, and there are impacts that were not anticipated, FTA would work with us uh, to address those impacts because they want to see this program as much a success as uh, the city does and as Metro does. I just want to add that the bus lane is about signing and striping and payment marking. It's not totally irreversible that we cannot remove, but of course that will be a last resort. We will look at ways to mitigate the impact like signal timing adjustments or other minor improvements to alleviate the problem. Um, we can also make adjustments to perhaps the time that instead of the uh, 7 to 9, uh, 4, to, uh, 4 to 7, we could possibly make adjustment to the time and some segment could be exempted. I think there are a lot of ways to deal with the problems if they do arrive. And, and, we're, and we're also anticipating, I assume, that some of this will mit be mitigated by a certain number of people saying, okay, this is a disaster, I'm just going to hop on the bus and go downtown, rather than having to get on the freeway at the 405 and get to it and drive downtown. Councilmember, may I add also that uh, the bulk of the uh, federal grant money is going to the roadway reconstruction uh, east of uh, Beverly Hills. So that money uh, is not, in con not being contested. That section of the bus lane project is not being contested. So even if uh, we end up deciding to modify some of the bus lanes west of Beverly Hills, we shouldn't be in danger of losing that FTA funding that is spent on the east side. So most of that funding is actually on that span. And Council Member, if I could just add one more thing, just to kind of stress the timeliness and the deadlines that we're, we're currently under and I think it goes back to your, your first question related to the uh, a potential lawsuit as well. Uh, the September 15th is the deadline for FTA to have an executed agreement with us. Uh, June 15th is their deadline for getting the application in from us. Because of the working relationship we have with FTA, they're willing to work with us through mid-July to get all of our approvals but they can't guarantee that they can process everything by September the 15th. Now, if there is a lawsuit, because since this program began, that was a potential from one direction or another, uh, we've carefully prepared the EIR, uh, but it will, will not uh, impact, uh, any potential lawsuit will not impact the, the execution of the grant. We do need to execute the funding by September 15th or we lose the appropriation. That will impact this project. So regardless of any possible lawsuit out there, uh, if council chooses to do this project at all, the sooner we can get an answer, the sooner we have a decision, the, the better and the better our risk of being able to go through all the nuts and bolts with, with FTA and meet the September 15th deadline. And what's your take if we uh, go with the, the proposal that's on the table at MTA or if we go with the, one of the two alternative proposals? Uh, right now our, our staff is telling us it will take roughly the same time. The, is that your take or do you think that this endangers the, the time? The proposal to go with what the Metro Board picked is the least, has the least risk because if the council makes that decision, then it doesn't have to go back to the MTA board at all. If council picks one of the other two projects, then it needs to go back to the MTA board. Depending on when you take your action, it's possible if it's an early action like next week that we could get it to the MTA board at the end of June. If it's a later council action, we won't be able to do it till the end of July. You're actually, just correct, it's August. The August MTA board meeting has been, you know, it's going to be July meeting is actually going to be beginning of August. So Thank actually you. right up against the deadline. Right up against it. And so FTA has told us anything after mid-July is at higher risk of not of not going through. And so the difference is that if you pick alternative A1, then it doesn't need to go back for the chain, you know, for MTA to agree with, with you on that, you're, we're through. And, uh, but if, if you pick a different alternative, 
then it does need to come back to the MTA board, and the project's just a greater risk that we won't be able to complete everything. And, and clearly, uh, Jaime uh, is corrected that the MTA board is in early August, and that's clearly uh, later than – it really pressures FTA to uh, – it just increases the risk. Thank you. Well, I just a couple of things on this here. I uh, first want to say everybody's important in this room. Everybody look around at everybody. We're all Angelinos. Everybody could fight for what they believe in. That's the importance of this city democracy. But I just wanted to say that because a lot of people have a lot of things they say about each other, and you're all valued. And if you have time this afternoon, go up to the tower. It's a beautiful view, Tom Bradley Tower. I think of Tom Bradley as a great mayor of the past. That being said, right now, on this issue here, uh, I want to do what's right because I was on the MTA board a number of times. I was the first to, to call for the subway study that led to the subway going down Wilshire, which some of you may disagree with, but I think Wilshire is extremely important due to the density. My concern is that the 405 intersection, and I've been out there on uh, a, a number of times recently, the only thing that I see him doing work on is the transition from eastbound Wilshire to southbound 405. Do we know for a fact that all four edges of that 405 is going to be changed, altered dramatically, or just the west side? Do you know those plans by heart? All I can tell you is the, the widening business um, uh, that we had a moment to say that the 15th, 16th, and 17th of July, especially the 16th, right. 17th, you can't get through. Uh, it's their wisdom that thinks that uh, an additional lane, carpool lane, is going to dramatically change the dynamic between the 405 and the 101. Well, let me just ask this question. Let me ask this question. Here's what I want. I would like to see what the MTA thinks it has its best chance of getting, which may be a little different than what maybe some have spoke of which is the seven, what is this, the 1A? Uh, yes. The 1A, but here's the question I want to ask you. And it is true, because one day I had to go to West Los Angeles very early in the morning, and I very, very early morning, I got there before everybody. And then when I came back, and I live in Silver Lake, I came back, the platoons of cars were coming to West L.A. There was no traffic going from West L.A. into the city, a proper. That being said, if there could be a caveat that says in the morning peak, that it may not be a bus only lane to the 405. Just let me throw that out as a thought to be studied. But yet in the afternoon, I know there's a lot of movement both directions that it may have to. I'm trying to get everybody to win on this in this sense here. I also was against some of this until you assured me, Department of Transportation, that the Miracle Mile area, not to be confused with the Golden Mile or whatever mile you call there, Ms. Brown, uh, is that the short streets and the people to turn, well, there'll be accidents. You assured me that you're going to handle that properly. So my question is this. Uh, can we go with what you stated, but in the morning peak, not have it? Because it, it may or may not be necessary at the morning peak. That's the question that I'd like you to ask the federal administrators. But I don't want to lose the grant. I think it's real important. I think the Wilshire Boulevard the busiest east-west street, Vermont, the busiest north-south, western, the busiest north-south. There's many connections here. And this is just the one question, because I think that's what you were talking about, that particular one. That I'm not sure, Mr. Koretz, but I'm trying to be sensitive to everybody's needs. Answer the questions later. Hear from the rest of us. But that's what I wanted to express. Mr. Park, yes. were you in let me just ask a couple of questions, Is that uh, just so for clarity. Uh, have we uh, done any analysis as to uh, the ridership per segment as we look at the uh, the routes and also within that ridership, um, what purpose of the ridership? Are they going to work? Are they going to school? Or w what is the purpose of uh, the ridership and where is the heaviest? That, I'm just wondering, get some sense of uh, the population on the, on the Wilshire uh, buses and where might they be coming from and where are they going and what purpose? Uh, during the peak period on the segment that we're talking about from MacArthur Park to Sentinella, mm -hmm. uh, we have 29,000 riders during the peak period. Mm -hmm. uh, that's opposed to 20,000 cars that are carrying about 2,400, 24,000 uh, people in the car. So we actually have more people traveling by bus during the peak period today uh, than we do traveling by auto. 
uh, we estimate that with this project, you know, because we're, what we're doing is we're increasing the time competitiveness of bus with the auto. We're making it more attractive. It will attract ridership of 33,000 to 35,000 people. So we, we will see some people shift over. About 10% people will shift. Of people in the cars will shift, use the bus lanes, and we'll just see a general attractiveness. Uh, I think because Wilshire is just so heavy, I don't have a breakdown of how people are using it, except to anecdotally say it seems like people are using Wilshire throughout the day, so people are using it to go to work, they're using it to go to school, they're using it in this case to go to the Veterans Hospital, uh, all, the, all the uses along the corridor. And uh, even where we have our subway currently, that uh, is a very highly used portion of the, of the BRT line. And so what you have is a, people using different types of trip on the bus than you do even, even where there's subway service. So it's heavily used for, for, for many purposes. Is there any sense of whether the majority of people ride the entire segment or are, are they short segments or any sense of that? I think our average on, this, on the whole line is about six miles. So uh, it, it, people are using it actually longer than they might use local service. Uh, it seems that from past studies that we've done that people get on and off in the Wilshire corridor more than in other transit corridors so that there's just a high usage from people going from one part of Wilshire to another part of Wilshire. And, and that's one of the characteristics that made this uh, kind of a, 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 you know, the type of project that we wanted to nominate to, to, to FDA for the grant. Because yeah. I'm trying to figure out if it's high usage but short distance, is it more of a dash type operation or is it more of a... It's so more of a long it, haul. It's yeah. more of the long haul. Yeah. So we're talking about people... More of a six mile average. So you're from MacArthur Park generally or average going six miles, which takes you almost the entire Right, and when we're talking six, you know, the, the average is kind of for the, the entire quarter, but, but basically, yes, there, there are people who are taking more of the long distance trip than the stop to stop trip. Yeah, that's an average. Okay. But to add just one thing, Mr. Parks, Western and Vermont are both heavy transit because of the subway, and then the people do go west. The Miracle Mile has some activity but uh, UCLA at peak is 68,000 people, hospital and students. So, but, but I, I'm just wanting to figure out in the sense of we, the best information we have as far as the, the ridership and if people are leaving communities and going roughly six miles, uh, our sense in is they're riding almost the entire route. Well, yes, if not riding the entire route, they're, they're, they're riding longer distances of the route, and, and that's kind of the nature, especially with the Metro Rapid service that the Metro Rapid attracts. So, you know, we do have local service in the corridor, but, you know, we're running buses about every minute to minute and a half, and it, because of the Metro Rapid service, we tend to attract the longer service, and that's kind of the nature of this particular corridor as well. The other thing I was wondering is that on all three options, A, A1, A2, are they all vetted by the EIR? So any, yes, one, of them, any one of them could be implemented. They've all been cleared yeah. in the environmental document. I got it right here. I got it. It's all here. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, you know, the one thing in, in you commented about, uh, uh, the, MTA, go the MTA already made a decision. And it concerns me that uh, because if all if the city, county, and MTA all have to agree, whoever jumps first, and corral everybody else in by saying we ran out of time. And I think that limits or, or could limit a larger exposure or review of the issue by other uh, jurisdictions because what you basically said is uh, MTA did theirs. If the city doesn't agree and you got to go back through several other review cycles, you could push us up against the, the line as it relates to the approval of the money, and nobody wants to lose the money. And I think if we'd done this a month ago, then MTA would be sitting in a room thinking the same thing. The city took a position. Now, if we don't do this, uh, and so often uh, we're, we're making decisions, in my judgment, maybe not best on the best facts, but on the urgency of keeping the money and the fact that we may have some discomfort of going back for a additional review. Well, I, I'll, I can tell you that as staff that uh, we've uh, pushed this project 
as, as, as expeditiously as we could, and LADOT has been a great partner with us, and, and they've done the same. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, both MTA and City Council asked us to look at two options after the final EIR was done. We actually went to the MTA board in December. Uh, City Council invited us forward shortly after that. And the Metro Board asked us to look at what is now Alternative A1, removing the Condo Canyon portion. And City Council asked us to look at uh, what is now A2. So we have uh, expedited and worked very hard to bring this back uh, uh, to meet the requests of both MTA and the City Council. And uh, you know, we are up against the deadline. And, and we are the lead agency at Metro. And, uh, I understand what you're saying, but we've worked really hard not to make the deadline be the, the decider, but, but the merits of the project. Let me just give you my perception. Having sit on MTA and been on this committee for a while, uh, it's my judgment in talking about uh, uh, public transportation. It's our goal is to entice people who have options to ride public transportation, because those who have no options, they're going to ride it whether uh, we move it or change it or whatever. So the issue is attracting people who normally have an option of a car to say, I'm going to leave my car and I'm going to uh, ride the public transportation. So therefore, the public transportation has got to be at least attractive and clean and safe and not cost prohibitive. And it actually gets you to, a, to the place the person wants to go. So from my judgment, I think in the short and long term, it is the greatest benefit for the city to have the 8.7 miles that takes you the full route and that you do not carve out a segment uh, that's on the end of the line. I think the other problem I have is that I'm going to make a judgment. It may not be accurate. But if people are leaving MacArthur Park area and riding unusually long period of six miles, I'm going to make an assumption they're going to work. And if they're going to work, then I'm going to assume that there's probably, if they're living in MacArthur Park and they're riding six miles and they're going to work on the Wilshire bus line, that there may not be adequate housing where they are currently going. And so I think, in my judgment, it basically, if you cut off that last mile, it basically allows a part of the city to opt out of maybe their fair share of affordable housing and allowing the bus system to compensate for that. And I think it's our role is to provide folks with the ability to get around the county and get where they're going. But also, I think every community has to bear the brunt of some of the transportation needs of the larger community and hopefully at some point some of the housing needs. Because one day we're going to build housing jobs and, and, uh, and transportation in the same area, and we don't have this cross-country type of <clears throat> environment. And so from my standpoint, I think it would be in, in the best interest of the city and the county to be looking at an 8.7 mile maximum to then maybe down the road, you'd get the fuller, depending on how well this works, you'd then be expanded at even greater while you're waiting for the uh, subway to the sea. And so these are the kinds of things I would hope, because I think the shorter you go, you're just opting people out that uh, may be uh, a, an area of discomfort, and yet that discomfort might be very much more expensive uh, for the general population that uh, a, a segment is discomfort, so they don't uh, have to deal with the uh, uh, public transportation, other people, it's mandatory they deal with it or else they can't get what they're going. So uh, my, it's, it's, um, I'm going to uh, recommend that we, for uh, alternative A, in my judgment, is the only way to go, uh, is that we look in that direction, that we go as the, the full maximum amount, we, we exhaust the money that's available, and that we give the city and the county a network that we can build into with the cross traffic that comes on the major thoroughfares, with the rail system that's on its way, that we're creating a larger network for the benefit of those who want to get around the county. Uh, Mr. Mr. Before you do, uh, Mr. Parks, do you realize why it stops at MacArthur Park? 
You know why? Because of the, I'm assuming it's the rail. No, it's the width of the roadway. It's the width of Wilshire Boulevard there. It's only six lanes there, where it's seven lanes west and even more, because there's no left turn channelization into town. That's why it stops there. So you give them that full lane. I just wanted to make that point. Mr. Alicorn. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not insensitive to the uh, concerns of those communities that will be impacted by the construction and and uh, the push to get people out of their cars and into uh, public transit. Uh, in fact, in my district, uh, we are experiencing a shutdown of uh, three um, off ramps. Uh, and on ramps on the five freeway. Uh, if you can imagine three on ramps and off ramps being shut down in your neighborhood, uh, I can tell you the disruption that is being caused uh, and to our community. Um, but the reason we're doing it is because we want to extend the carpool lane uh, over the Hollywood freeway onto the five freeway uh, so that people could get through a lot quicker. Uh, so frankly, I'm not getting any complaints. Uh, we, uh, the people, understand that although those off ramps and on ramps will be shut down for years, yeah, not not months, but years, um, they're willing to do that uh, for the benefit of their kids to be able to have a better system and to encourage people to carpool. That's what this is all about. The uh, I don't understand why we we would. Uh, ask the federal government for something less than the maximum they'd be willing to give us. Uh, the fact is that I want to get the maximum out of the federal government because I don't think we get our fair share. Uh, most estimates are that we get 63 cents for every dollar in federal taxes we pay. Um, so why would we ask for less than what they would give us on this uh, is beyond me. Secondly, why would we want to add, why would we want to do something that provides less than the maximum ridership, less than the maximum uh, impact, positive impact? Why would we want to uh, block an opportunity to get Santa Monica to participate? Because if you cut out a mile, why would Santa Monica extend? You leave that mile in. Santa Monica would probably be willing, be more interested in extending. Uh, I, uh, there's a lot of politics in this, uh, but this shouldn't be about politics. This should be about uh, the future. What is the, what is in the best interest of the people of Los Angeles in the future? Maybe they're not your age yet, uh, but that's what we should be looking at. And I believe that by enhancing their quality of life, we increase our own opportunities as senior citizens in the future. Because if they don't have access to good quality jobs, they're not going to be paying the taxes to be able to take care of us when somebody destroys our Social Security system. I believe it ends at MacArthur Park because that's the uh, highly concentration. It's a high concentration of cheap workforce, and and they got to move. You know, it 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 amazes me how many people in, from MacArthur Park go to uh, the West Side uh, to take care of people's kids and have to take an extra half hour to do so, and the people that they're taking care of their kids don't don't have the sensitivity to get them to work faster so they can get back to their own kids and take care of them. So, the social reality is that we need this system. Uh, this, the future demands that if we're going to improve this city, we, we can't be uh, hunkering down to our political needs. Uh, this is a this is a pragmatic project. It was from the beginning, and that's why City Council approved it. That's why the mayor supported it. That's why the MTA supported the application. Uh, nothing's changed. Not one thing, except politics. 
uh, I support uh, 8.7 miles. And my position has not changed. Now, if we have to make a strategic decision as this moves forward in the, on the council floor, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll decide that when it comes. But in this committee, as we send this forward, I'm with Council Member Parks. The maximum benefit, maximum ridership, maximum uh, opportunities for the future uh, is in the maximum uh, length of this project, 8.7 miles. I support 8.7 miles, and I hope that all the forces that come to bear on this committee today will, will go back to the county uh, and uh, other players on the MTA and get them to agree to, to the maximum benefit which will be 8.7 miles. We'll find out when this goes to council what, what our council wants to do. Um, but to say we want 7.7 .7 miles is sort of, it, it, <laughs> I don't understand that one, to tell you the truth, because it, it's like, you know, if you agree with 7.7, .7, then your reasons for not agreeing with 8.7 are highly questionable in my mind. There's no pragmatic reason why you would support 7.7 uh, versus 8.7. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, is it 7.7 or 7.7? Yeah, yeah. 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 They want to take out one mile. There's no reason in my mind, other than politics, mm -hmm. that you would con that you would accept 7.7 .7 instead of 8.7. But the benefit, the most benefit, will come, I believe, from 8.7, and I will support that position in this committee. Okay. Uh, what you're finding fun here, folks, is there's no Brown Act violation among this group. Uh, we are totally free spirits, all five of us. <laughs> we truly are. Uh, and I just want to mention there's three on the table here, but this should have been a fourth. There's Eternal Bay, which is 8.7. That's before the politics had hit Westwood and they pulled out a mile. Okay? That's what happened there. Uh, the alternative, which is um, the A1, is the 7.7. That's where the fragmented west side happened uh, on that note. Okay, my alternative, of course, is 5.4, and I'll tell you why I come to that. And I agree with you about me flipping on this historically. Uh, I was new in the job when I first came in, and I can tell you, I have walked, I have driven that stretch from the 405 uh, to the border of Santa Monica. Okay, 200,000 cars go into Santa Monica every single day. Okay, I don't believe any of these timelines, any of this money things. You had 10 years to get uh, Pam O'Connor and Santa Monica into the family. You've had 10 years to get Beverly Hills into the family. What I suffer from is I don't mind it bus only to the VA. I don't mind bus only to UCLA. But when you cross that 405, you're getting into a very congested, crazy spot for a little over a mile, and then Santa Monica opens up like a boulevard. You know, those folks coming out of Santa Monica are going everywhere. They're not going on a bus necessarily or a car necessarily. They're just getting out of Santa Monica, okay? And we know, because I can walk faster than the cars or even the buses. If the study looked at the bus riders in those buses from the 405 to Santa Monica, did an analysis and peak traffic time on both scores and gave me that kind of data. And then also truthfully did a traffic study that pointed out it would be more efficient and more effective for automobile riders who are coming from the South Bay, coming from the Valley, coming from the East Side, coming from the South Side to get into Santa Monica, would be better off getting on one of their buses, connecting to another bus and getting on the bus. I would be 100 percent for it. I frankly believe a bus only lane truly now with my experience here is from the sea. And I know the politics of Santa Monica. I suffer through it every day. Uh, and how it impacts my district. So it's disingenuous for us to play out this um, racist notion or any other notion about people. You know, and it's disingenuous uh, to, to talk about it, West LA, and never bringing in Brentwood and explaining how everybody on my side of town, I gotta tell you folks, has figured every angle how you ride around, drive around, don't drive around. It is a nightmare. 
I mean, we just experienced that with the mayor and I cook we're half an hour late for a press conference because you couldn't even get to the location at nine in the morning. So I think we might have three different motions here with no seconds or we'll have seconds and I don't know where we're gonna go with it. But I frankly think the part we know everybody agrees with is the five point four. You go back to Beverly Hills, you go back to Santa Monica and you get them to join into this program so that it is a regional bus only lane. It's a joke for my folks to have to suffer through that little bit of a mile there uh, uh, for the benefit of what we don't even have a statistical analysis that really clearly points out how it gridlocks that. And then to say, well, we'll try it, and then if it doesn't work, we'll change it. Look, you're going to destroy my streets. You're going to widen this. You're going to do that. That's a capital expenditure. Uh, that is not uh, a simple thing that you do there. So, and I don't know if I even have a second for this, but I want to make a motion right now for the 5.4, send it back to MTA and get them moving on that, and then get them immediately to do a true study that brings in Santa Monica and Beverly Hills and has the integrity of the region and, and, and the citizenry at stake. Otherwise, go, go to the VA. I don't mind that. Go to UCLA. But when you cross that other side of the VA, uh, you're into a very problematic situation where already the corners and the streets are F. Can't even figure out how to make it non-F at this point. And that's because the history of how things happened on the west side was never coordinated between Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, Santa Monica, Culver City, L.A. County, and L.A. City. Until most recently, we all now sit in a room. But right hand, left hand, nobody talked together. Uh, and that is what has put us in this dilemma. So no offense to the bus riders. I think you guys are great. And if I could get on a bus and get downtown quicker or I can get on a bus and go anywhere and make anything happen, I believe in buses. I, I need, we need to get out of the automobile. I believe in bicycles, too. So I just put my motion out. You can second or not second it. I push for 5.4 miles, which is the clear segment that everybody believes in. Do I have a second? I got another motion in my second. <laughs> Wait a minute. Will anybody second this motion? Well, I may second it after you. If you, if you don't second mine, I think I got a better motion. I have the, I have the best motion. Well, you have the best motion. All right. That's all right. We got that. Okay. Hold on just a second. Uh, just to let you know. <laughs> that's right. That's very good. That's why Mr. Parks is Mr. Parks. 725 is the bus. Correct? For Wilshire? 720. 720. 720. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. The 720. The or where's the origin of the 720? Commerce, right? Whittier Boulevard, Whittier. over Sixth Street Bridge through downtown. It doesn't or it, it doesn't originate in the city of Los Angeles. It, 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 very far deep into the eastern part of the county. This is a long haul bus that goes in there. The width of Wilshire Boulevard past MacArthur Park proper does allow for a bus only lane. That's why even down near Good Samaritan Hospital is very narrow. I would love to see you better utilize San Vicente Boulevard. And I said this when I was an alternate on the MTA board. San Vicente, both sides, both the east side of San Vicente. Even if we got to San Vicente right now and use San Vicente Burton Way to just shoot people around in a way that they would move quicker. Because destination and time for everybody. And Mr. Alicone made a very good point about people wanting to be home after they finish their work day. What I'd like to ask... Uh, that if we did have a motion to do 1A, if I believe that's the one there, but it goes in phases, that it really goes like tomorrow from MacArthur Park, Parkview to San Vicente, and then that they would do that with additional study. I don't know how much past the intersection uh, is uh, at, at San Vicente where the post over the Army, uh, the... Uh, National Guard office is right there at, at uh, San Vicente in Barrington. Is that right? Right there. Right. Is, it's just west of the freeway up to that point. Wilshire and to that point. Does it go beyond that or does it where does it stop? The section that goes west of the freeway. Centinella. Now, could it? I got it. I understand that. But what's the width of that street there? Do you know what the width of the street is? About 80. 80. 80 feet wide. What's the Wilshire Boulevard in uh, Wilshire Boulevard in Miracle Mile? Uh, about about 80, 84. 80, 84. I just think we could get going on it right now if we look at it that way and have an additional study on that part if it's possible. But I know there's a San Francisco connection with the federal government, and I also believe too in the mornings if there's a reverse lane, I would if there's a lane's empty, I want people to use it. Nothing frustrates people more 
whether it's someone on a bus or someone on a bike, so that if there's, they can't get into the lane. So, uh, Councilman, um, uh, City Council has to select one of the three alternatives the way it's proposed in the environmental document. So that means we have to we, we have to stay to to the route. Uh, if 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 and and the funding is fully utilized on each alternative. So if uh, you pick alternative A, you have. But the MTA, money. what the MTA support? One A. One A. One A. But if we support one A, I would just say that there. But it. Does it give us any opportunity? I'm worried about the improvements to the San Diego Freeway and what coordination it's taken on in this project because it's been 10 years, you know, to get here. Is there any, and how wide is it going to be underneath the San Diego Freeway? Does anyone know if anything underneath the San Diego Freeway viaduct, is that going to be widened at all? It's not going to be widened. So, so for me, it makes it tough because it's all about arteries, and that's an artery that if it's not widened, then you have a problem, you know, what Mr. Rosendahl states about. So, but I do want to see us move forward as far as we can. And if the MTA recommended 1A, that's what they did? A1. 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 Which is like the whole project without the condo, one mile condo canyon section. Right, but see, the one mile in that area, which would be west of Beverly Hills to UCLA area, they have multiple jet outs due to street engineering's requirements of the past years that took place there. I mean, it's a very difficult street that would be confusing to remove that lane because the uh, getting in and out of driveways, I understand that. So here's what I'm asking. Is there a second for 1A? A1. I'll second that. Second it. Okay. Okay, so we've got three, two motions that have a second. Yeah. Mr. Parks. I have a motion. I second. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we, we have two motions for well, the he second. Had a, well, he may have changed over. Yeah, I did. You want to go? A? All right, A. Okay. okay. He, he's, he's at 8.7, yeah, okay? Yeah, okay, I'm you better, two guys. better with letters than numbers. 0.7. Point yep. And, and yep. L. Rosendahl is yep. at 5.4. So, so what are we labeling? Yeah. Option one or, or? It's option one. You got option one, option one. two, okay. or three. Option one that's on the. Uh, okay. So the committee, uh, let's let's just start with option one since it's one, two, three. Okay. Option one. We got two votes here. So anybody wants to switch to that? Uh, no, but I could speak to it. Okay. Um, to me, option option one makes no sense because it puts back in the Condo Canyon area, which was removed primarily because it has no positive impact. Doesn't add any time. Has the exact opposite problem in Mr. Mr. Rosendahl's district. His problem is he has too much traffic. The problem in the Condo Canyon area is you get nothing out of it. You don't you don't shorten the bus riders ride by very much. You screw up some intersections. You have a lot of safety questions with the multiple uh, with the jet outs with the driveways. You have 56 driveways. It's the only residential portion the whole way. So of, of all the choices, for me, that's the one that I could never support. So that's a no the vote. other two motions, I think, Correct. make some sense. No vote. Okay, he's a no vote on that. So we have three options out of this committee, which is two, two, and one. All three options we will send to the council uh, forthwith as quickly as we can so the council can take action in any direction they want to go. Do we all agree with that, colleagues? Sure. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'll second your motion as well, so at least both of the other two motions are on the table. Oh, oh my Lord. And let's, Look at that. let's discuss it. Can you do that legally? You second two different, I guess you can. Two different motions are well, necessary. John White, City Clerk, you could send three separate communications without the formality of motions to council with each of your three proposals. Right. If we choose to. If you choose to. So there's no need to get a second to move your uh, recognition forward, Mr. Rosenthal. Okay, so let's just move this out of committee with the discussions we had here um, with, with the comments that were made that basically the committee has not come up uh, with, with option A, B, or C, or whatever we're calling them. Mr. Levant. Just one other thing to the MTA. <laughs> An underutilized street is Venice and San Vicente. And Venice and San Vicente once was the red car line. Please look at that with additional 700 lines to bring people from the east to the west. Thank you all very much. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal. Mr. Parks has a comment, and then Mr. Koretz. If Mr. Koretz endorses option two and three, does that mean 13 miles? Oh, very no. good. No, very good. good. I'm not he adds the two together. 
<laughs> you can add them up. Okay, folks. Uh, uh, Mr. Rosendahl? Yes, Mr. Uh, Correct. You, you sort of took a vote on the first measure. I, I'm not so sure that it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a vote on the other two measures that were moved and seconded. I'm a little confused on that. Is there any reason that rather than just report them all out that we well, you have two motions that have been moved and seconded and not voted on? Well, the point is, does anybody want to change their first and second or, or, or are we in, in the gridlock uh, on the committee? Well, in, in the interest of uh, reducing the gridlock, uh, I might be open to uh, voting for your motion. Well, you already said you would second it, but I couldn't get a third, so I don't know. Well, that's a vote. Why don't you put it up to a vote? But how many times you I don't know where to vote. We I have. think I could vote. Okay. I, All right. I first and second it. Uh, can I have a, get a third vote on that one? I don't think you can. I'm voting for <laughs> 1A. B. What am I voting for? Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think you're asking for A1. 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 A1 is 7.7. Okay, folks. This is truly the gridlock on the okay. committee as we're experiencing in the west side of the city. With that notion, the meeting is adjourned and we'll send it to committee with all three on the table. <laughs>